show must go on uh, was created by Jerome Bell in 2001 and um, we have heard about this work and it's uh, become one of those iconic works in the contemporary dance world it really engages with an audience in quite a particular way he's a conceptual uh, maker but the this particular show the show must go on is just so engaging and so has such an immediate um, effect and response with an audience and that drew us to this particular work. Before we, before we do the film, let's try the entrance that you guys know where to go. Yeah. When we work with Jean, we always talk about hey, not three steps, but the first step is you direct your um, your attention, your energy to the audience. It's the first thing you come together, and it's you coming. But you're also coming together as a group, of course, as a group of performer coming on stage. But people still want to see the the, sh the show in a way. And I mean, of course, there's a difference between when we and we premiered it in 2001, and then the next shows we did. But nevertheless, I think it's something about the piece. It's a general statement about theatre and, and a very an iconic work, I think, for, for Jerome Bell by that time. Yeah, I, I think people want to see, still want to see it and it says something to the people still. What I really love is that we are looking at authenticity. And for me, the show must go on, plays with the concepts of performance. What is a performance and who is a performer? And how can I really, truly be myself on stage without hiding behind a specific movement aesthetic? Jerome Bell works very much on breaking down um, the performer um, power in the sense that he actually wants an audience to feel like it could be them on stage. So actually he plays with and challenges and makes us question who are these people on stage and actually as an audience member, could it be us? And this somehow also seems to really have a resonance with Kanduko's um, work and our approach to looking for diversity, diversity in the cast and, and this idea of playing with who's on stage and how do we therefore view both the people on stage and ourselves in the audience. We've been in two days, I think, um, and it's been great. It's like um, Dana and Enrique are brilliant at facilitating the work. Um, I remember seeing the work quite a few years ago, so I'm getting lots, lots of flashbacks and, and of the work. And it's great being involved with the whole company. Um, um, yeah, we're getting to sort of run through a process which they went through developing the work. For me, what is striking at the moment is that we are not just being taught a form, because obviously we are recreating an existing piece, but we are given the time and the creative process to go through finding and discovering by ourselves that form. What we've been discussing is to keep the intention of the material and not necessarily the form. Yeah. But it's also something we don't know how it's going to develop. We, I mean, we, yeah, we're faced with with questions, yeah, and in that sense, <laughs> it's it's the first time it had, they've gone so far yeah. for me. And when I told him yesterday, yesterday we had this discussion yesterday evening, and I said like, but what do we want? You know, this is the thing. What do we want? Huh? So yeah, you have to balance this form without it becoming, but in a way that it becomes it has sense. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the repetition of form yeah. with uh, with bodies or with people where that form does not make sense and. Yeah, which becomes a, an incredible imposition uh, and something unbearable to do and eventually to watch. So it, this is the line we're trying to, or the area we're trying to balance and for which we still don't, do not have answers. We'll, we'll answer them in rehearsals. So we met Jer Jerome Bell um, uh, just after the dress rehearsal and you know, he was, uh, you know, a very humble man, and, you know, very, but he was uh, very, very positive uh, about what we, what we had done with his work, um, and very supportive, and, um, yeah, he kind of also, he gave us license uh, and a bit more of an agency in this work to kind of really push ourselves. Um, in certain scenes, he wanted, to, like, us to almost, you know, kill ourselves with exhaustion. And in other scenes, he wanted us to be, you know, in, uh, even more tender. Uh, and he just, yeah, I mean, just that hour spent with him, he kind of 
he really kind of just gave colour to the work and gave it a, a, a texture that was probably lacking. A particularly exciting aspect of the restaging project of the show must go on is that as a company, Kanduko had a brilliant opportunity to invite 15 guest performers to join our core company of dancers. What we wanted to do with that was really open up our doors. So rather than selecting people we already knew or we were already working with, um, was to really go out and meet, lo meet and engage with lots of different people. Well, one of the reasons that I um, applied for the project was I had seen Jerome Bell's Disabled Theatre the months before and I was absolutely fascinated by how that was put together and I've thought about it almost constantly since because it's so, so different and so thought-provoking and so powerful. It's a huge He's the warden for me personally, and they get to know the cast individually. Some, you know, I'm closer to some than others, but they, they get to know each and every one of them, and there's different personalities and different walks of life, different things that they've done in life. Some have never been on stage, others are the stage is the second home. Um, well, one thing, I don't know if it's so much your name, I mean, I guess I'm a bit of an old dog at this as well, um, and that's not to be jaded because it's always a new experience, but one thing I really enjoyed was watching some of the performers, um, or even like, say, for instance, Betty, who's never been on stage before, um, and just seeing their excitement about being inside like the auditorium and then sort of witnessing the crowd, and I'm um, just seeing that excitement and that drive for them even before the show last night was, was great. Um, and then that, that, that thrill at the end of it, um, the adrenaline rush. Um, and now I, I, I got that as well. I think, yeah, no, that was um, kind of really exciting. For me, actually, the most surprising thing has been the willingness. Yes. The, the availability of people to actually to work with what we give them. Bec uh, often we have people who question a bit, who are, who are not sure, and, and also it's our work to, to overcome that. Here, that has been the biggest surprise that people are willing to do it and to try it and to go with it. I think one of the reasons this piece is so clever, apart from the fact that it's so carefully um, designed and planned by Jerome, is that because it has the, the pop songs, that they inhabit like a, a common collective, you know, a, a, a collective conscious understanding of memory of people. And so right from the beginning, you listen and you think, oh, and, and we also understand the lyrics. So you listen and we think, oh, we, we understand the lyrics together. But not only this, I think the the codes of theatre are codes that we also understand. And what he does is he really exposes them and by, by sometimes subverting them and, and, and uh, provoking them a little bit, uh, he gets them to, us to think about those things. Um, and I think this is so important, especially more and more now than 15 years ago when this piece was first made. Uh, and for us to be reminded why is it that is relevant and gratifying to sit in a theatre with a bunch of people you do not know and go through the same experience, I think it's, um, yeah, it's very uh, reassuring, I think, why, why live work has been with us for so long and it will continue.